This is a, a special call meeting of the Board of Trustees for UISD. Today is Wednesday, June 25th, 2014, and the time is approximately 6.04 p.m. We are here at the uh, 5208 Santa Claudia Lane in Laredo, Texas, the uh, Bill Johnson Student, Student Activity Complex. Um, for the record, we have Juan Roberto Ramirez. Present. Ricardo Molina. Present. And Pat Campos. Present. I'm Javier Montemayor. Let the record reflect that we have a quorum. Uh, this meeting has been uh, duly called and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> Consideration for the Board of Trustees to decide on the, on the public meeting date, time, and place to discuss the 2014-2015 budget and proposed 2014 tax rate. Yes. Good evening, board members and members of the audience. Uh, this evening, as, as staff has been working on the budget preparations for the 2014-2015 school year, we are ready to uh, bring forth the budget and the proposed tax rate. Ms. Laida Benavides will have that presentation and some information with regards to that. Good evening, thank you, Gloria. Uh, good evening, uh, members of the board and audience. Um, what we would like to do, this is an action item that we usually bring in July when we're gonna adopt our budget in August. Uh, we're ready for the budget. Uh, we will have a special call meeting on Monday, but some procedures had to be done before, which was we needed to publish a notice 10 days before June 30th, and we did last Friday. It came out in the Laredo Morning Times. And so at this point, uh, we'd like uh, Mr. Montemayor to just kind of, uh, you have a copy there of just um, announcing to the public about the public meeting that we are gonna be having uh, next week, um, next Monday. Okay. For the record, I have a notice of public meeting to discuss budget and proposed tax rate, which indicates that the United Independent School District will hold a public meeting at 6 p.m. June the 30th, 2014 in the Bill Johnson Activity, Student Activity Complex, 5208 Santa Claudia Lane. You want me to continue? Yeah, the purpose of the meeting. Um, okay, all right. The purpose of this meeting is to discuss the school district's budget that will determine the tax rate that will be adopted. Public participation in the, in, in the discussion is invited. The tax rate is ultimately adopted at this meeting or at a separate meeting at a later date. It may not exceed the proposed rate shown below unless the district publishes a revised notice containing the same information and comparison set out below and holds another public meeting to discuss the revised notice. That's fine, sir, right there. And that's exactly um, announcing to the public. Uh, we will have a public hearing that will start at 6 o'clock and then the special call meeting will, will start. I, I think we have it scheduled for 6.15. Um, then, and it's going to be here at the, at the Fine Arts Building. The, the second item, uh, it's the approval for the board to vote on the 2014 proposed tax rate as published in the notice for the public hearing. Um, I know this is kind of strange because you're not really voting for the tax rate. It's just a proposed. formality to say this is our proposed tax rate right now as it appeared in the publication. So I, I don't know, a formal action would be, I guess, somebody just approving um, the recommendation there. Can you tell us what the proposed tax rate is? I'm sorry, uh, for the maintenance and operation, we're proposing it to stay at $1.04. Uh, the debt service tax rate right now, it's proposed to be 0 0.184860, which is exactly three cents more than the current rate we have right now. However, uh, we sold bonds on Monday, and that's where uh, Estrada and Jose are going to present some information on that. And it was a very good deal. Uh, the market rates were down. And so when we come in August, we are assuming that it's going to be less than the 18 cents, that we won't need the full three cents. Mr. Chairman, if I may, Ms. Bernardi, you mentioned that the tax rate stayed uh, almost the same, and you mentioned a dollar 
four cents. For the maintenance and operation part. One dollar zero four cents. A dollar four. And then the debt service uh, to pay back the bonds that we borrow. Zero. Right now, we're proposing, and it came out in the notice, uh, 18 four eight six cents. However, in looking at our calculations, we just sold the bonds on Monday. We we are very close to not thinking we're going to need that. We're we're looking at more at less than two and a half cents. However, we're still going to get our certified roll from the Webb County Appraisal District, and we'll come to you in August for the official adoption of the tax rate. All right. So I just just to clarify for the record, it's uh, that we. Number one, have good news because it seems that you are on track to have a lesser uh, tax rate than what was proposed um, initially uh, through the through the bond program. And then, secondly, uh, that you do have a balanced budget um, that 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 you're working on, and uh, that's also you know further good news for for the for the school district. That's correct. That's correct. So, okay. and we need a I guess a motion to adopt the yeah. proposed tax rate. Uh, that's. Uh, as recommended. That's where I was going. Can I get a motion to approve the second. proposed tax rate? Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those against, motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Benavides. Thank you. And Mr. Montemayor, we could just go back. I know uh, it's listed as an action item, uh, just to kind of maybe for the board to just uh, adopt the statement that you read earlier for the record uh, as agenda item 4A, if there could be a motion to adopt. I as, a motion. as presented. Second. I have a motion to adopt as read the notice of public meeting to discuss budget and proposed tax rate with the second. Uh, all of any discussion on that? All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. And agenda item number five, okay. informational item discussion of bond pricing terms for United Independent School District Unlimited Tax School Building Bond Series 2014 and related bond purchase agreement. Yes, we have in, in the audience today uh, Robert Tijerina from Estrada Hinojosa, uh, our financial advisors, and Dan Martinez from Winstead uh, PC from San Antonio, who is co-bond counsel along with Juan Cruz and Associates. Uh, this was our team and some underwriters that you all approved uh, earlier uh, this year, I think a couple of months ago, to help us sell $100 million in bonds. Uh, just one of the things to share with you was that we were first out there in the market this week. There was about seven or eight deals that were going on in the state of Texas. We were one of the sec we were the second biggest at 100 million, and so uh, I think Mr. Tijerina has very good news to share with the board this evening. General Wilson. Thank you, Ms. Benavides. Again, for the record, Robert Tijerina was trying to financial advisor for the school district, uh, handed out a presentation. And behind tab one, not going to go over in detail, but again, as Ms. Benavides stated, on page three, there's about 10 other financings that were in the market this week, and we decided to sell bonds on Monday morning. And on page three, we listed the other financings. Behind page three is just a history of where interest rates have been over the last few years. We're still in a historical low interest rate environment. Now, if you turn to page, or actually behind tab two, page nine, sources and uses, as Ms. Benavia stated, we sold 100 million, or we had authorization for 100 million dollars worth of bonds, but in reality, uh, we were able to sell 87,690,000 was the par amount, and then you have the premium right below that of 13.2 million which got us a total of $100,925,243.75. But if you look at the very bottom, the uses in the school district's project fund, the district on July 31st will receive $100 million for the construction renovations of all the projects. So we're able to sell $87.6 million and still be able to get you $100 million worth of projects. And again, that's due to the premium that involved uh, the cost of issuance being funded uh, by the premium. Now, behind page nine is just some other similar financings that were in the market, uh, pretty much are comparable to United ISD, you have Laredo ISD, Clear, uh, Clear Creek ISD, and Maynard ISD. Now, behind that page, the following page, the tax rate impact analysis, the interest rate, if you notice on column E, row three, 
The interest rate on the financing is 3.89%. Almost a year ago, when we were contemplating calling a bond election, we were expecting about a 4.9%. Just in May, a few months, uh, last month, we were expecting 3.99%. It's 10 basis points less, 3.89%. And again, on column E, we have the principal and interest payments for the financing. We have a small interest payment that's scheduled on August the 15th, 2014 of 181,000. Already discussed that with staff. But again, if you go to column O, line four, the staff and the board uh, communicated to the public that if they approved a $400 million, $408 million bond election, the total tax rate would be about 12.9 cents. Based on property growth, based on the low interest rate we got in the market on Monday, we're showing right now if everything stays in place, property values go up, instead of 12.9 cents, we're looking at 9 cents, so almost 4 cents less. And again, the increase that we're expecting for this coming fiscal year in about a month or two, instead of a 3 cent INS tax rate increase, if you notice I'm calling O, row 12, it's 2.46 cents. So that's about half a cent less due to the low interest rates. Now again, behind tab three, it's just the rating letters from all three rating companies, Moody's, S&P, and Fitch, the PSF uh, insurance letter from TEA, and also the cover page of the OS. But in a nutshell, the rating companies had some really good things to say about the school district and what staff has done and the board has done, sound financial operations, healthy reserve funds, sizable tax base and growing enrollment. So again, this does not require any action. The action by the board took place last week on June the 17th. This is just information showing the final uh, principal and interest payments and the interest rate that we were able to receive on Monday. Congratulations uh, to the board, to staff, and to the district. This is a great financing. There's a lot of them. They were coming out this week and we're able to go out first before everyone else. Any questions from board or staff? I guess just for the record, could you just uh, state the rating for the, uh, the, that the school district received from the rating? Yes, the school district with the permanent school fund bond insurance re received a, bo a bond rating of AAA from all three rating companies. And again, that's because you receive the insurance from the state of Texas. The AAA is the highest rating that you can receive from any of the agencies. I'm just, uh, just, uh, just to verify my own curiosity. Yes, sir. On the uh, 925,000, that's the cost for us to. Uh, yes, sir. The financing cost is roughly, if you look on, it's on page nine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right on page nine on the uses, you have the cost of issuance, 402,000. 522,000 for the underwriters. And that, that money comes out of the, the bond issue? Yes, it comes out of the financing on the principal and interest. And what staff had did before, whenever you saw the bond proceeds, they had listed um, $3 million in change that would be coming from the $408 million. So we were assuming, and staff was assuming that this $100 million about a million dollars was gonna come from that, leaving the district about 99 million for projects. So instead, we're able, it changed a few years ago to where we can put in the cost of issuance into the financing and leave you the full 100 million for projects. Will eventually, on the long run, will, it, will, will gain interest in favor of us to, or that's, that's the, the last thing that will be charged for them, for them, a uh, hundred million. Now, on the hundred million on the project fund, you're going to receive that amount on July 31st, and the cost of issuance and the underwriter's discount, that's going to be paid on also closing. So, part you won't be billed separately, if I'm understanding correct the question correctly, and the payment the district is financing all of that, but you're able to finance it through your annual payments instead of having. 99 million for projects, we're able to put that cost of issuance in a loan, kind of like I think Ms. Benavides uh, said this a couple of days ago, like whenever you purchase a home, you have the closing costs. You can pay for the closing costs separate, or you can put the closing costs into the loan. So the closing costs, in essence, your cost of issuance was put into the loan, 
And then you're making, when you make your monthly mortgage payments, you're also paying for your closing costs. And here, you're paying for the financing costs, which we always assumed we would, but we assumed that we would have roughly 99 million for project fund, but the market allowed us, the underwriters, the people loaning you the money says, you can finance the cost of issuance in the loan so the district can have $100 million for their projects instead of $99 million. What's that? With a, yeah, with a premium above, if you see that, the net premium, the cost of issuance is part of that. So again, it all blends in together. So out of your $408 million, you issued $100 million already. So you still have $308 million. But the first phase one, $100 million is going to all the projects. Okay. Good to stay there, but the question is, that amount that we're paying, taken out of the bond money for the 408.8 million, would it lessen uh, the amount that we're going to, for the expenses that you presented to us that is going to be done for the schools and, and all kinds of uh, constructions? And no, what's going to happen is, since we had $408 million, and, and we told the public that about close to $4 million would be spent on financing costs, that's like correct. our closing yes, costs. Yes, yes. Well, the way we structured this deal was that now we have, instead of having to use some of it for financing, it's all gonna be available for our construction. So rather than a million dollars and us just using $99 million, just like the way. we will have a hundred million, um, and, and we get probably already spent it right <laughs> now as we were talking. But no, we will have the full hundred million available for phase one of our bond projects. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Okay, thank you. No problem, sir. No problem. It's been a long week for everyone. No problem. This, any questions, Mr. Montaya? Mayor, board members, staff? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. We are working on that grand opening for elementary school number 27. The ribbon cutting, actually, or the ceremony that we'll be having there to, to have the construction start officially uh, on July 16th at um, 10 a.m. in the morning. So we're working on that project. Uh, the $100 million uh, is already being put to, to good use and uh, we're moving forward with our construction project. For what school? For what? Uh, it, it is uh, elementary school number 27, so that's what we're calling it, in the Celito Lindo subdivision. Celito Lindo. Okay. Yes. Okay. I have a motion to adjourn? Second. We're adjourned. Thank you. <coughs>